Welcome to Amy Learns to Cook. On the show today, we're going to unbox my brand new 13 inch Cathalon Deep Skillet. Now I bought this skillet as a replacement for a pan that I affectionately call my potato pan. And unfortunately, my potato pan met a very terrible ending because of Eric. So he has bought me this new pan in replacement of that pan. So if you want to hear the story of what happened to my world famous potato pan and see the unboxing of this brand new Cathlon 13 inch deep skillet, stay tuned. So real quick, let me tell you the story of what happened to my potato pan. I had this pan that I absolutely loved. I called it my potato pan. That is because I always cooked potatoes in that pan. Once a week in the morning, we would make a big breakfast and part of that would be hash brown potatoes, fried potatoes, potatoes O'Brien, some kind of potatoes. And I had a pan that I designated my potato pan because it worked great. I love that pan. It was cheap. I had it for years. I threw it in the dishwasher constantly and it just held up beautifully. And unfortunately, my pan had ran into some major problems at a barbecue cook-off. This pan, what I really liked about it is number one, it was nonstick. I tried to make potatoes in a regular um, stainless steel saute pan and it turned out to be a disaster. Saute pans that are plain stainless, you really need to let them heat up, put the oil in there and put in your food so it doesn't stick. Unfortunately, with the long cooking time of potatoes and the way that they have a way of sticking and separating and, and it just builds up, every time I cook hash brown potatoes in a plain stainless steel pan, it just turns out to be a mess. So the best way for me to cook any kind of potatoes like that is either in a nonstick or in some kind of cast iron that's really heavily seasoned and has a slick surface. That's the only way I've had any good luck with it. If anybody out there has had any good luck with, with doing hash rounds in a saute pan, go ahead and leave a comment and let me know your tricks because I have a terrible time with it. I end up getting this huge burnt on thing of potatoes on the bottom and I have to soak it for days and it just is a mess. So this pan that I had, I actually got it off of one of these well-known TV um, shopping channels, believe it or not. And this was back in the day where I didn't have very many pans and my pans were really low quality. And I bought this thing and I just thought it was the greatest thing ever. And what was great about it is it had a wide base and it had higher sides than a saute pan that were sort of flared like this. They weren't too high to steam it and basically make steamed potatoes. They were at exactly the right height where they would crisp up and I could get a um, spatula in there to turn it. And I just love that thing. <laughs> Unfortunately, what happened to my potato pan is it ended up bouncing down the highway. Yes, my poor potato pan bounced down the highway. So several years ago, me and Eric were really into competition barbecue, we still are, but we were competing a lot more than we are now, just because we haven't had a lot of time. And we had made a decision to invest in a higher quality smoker. We were using um, some smokers that worked really good. They're called Weber Smoky Mountains. They're fabulous smokers. But we wanted something with more capacity and was more like a set it and forget it sort of smoker. So we made the decision to invest some money and buy a smoker called a Backwood Smoker. And these smokers are fabulous, right? And we were so excited. We couldn't wait to get our hands on one of those. 
Unfortunately, because backwood smokers aren't mass produced like the Smoky Mountain, they're basically handmade. So to get one, they have to be shipped from Louisiana and they weigh a ton. So all the barbecue cooks out there that are trying to get a backwoods are usually scrambling around trying to see who has the model that they want and with what features. Well, we found one that we really liked. Um, so we made the decision to go and pick it up. So we headed up, we loaded everything in the car, truck, and we headed up to Rochester to pick up this smoker. So what made the matters more difficult with picking up the smoker is we decided that on our way home, we were going to do a barbecue cook off in one of the states on the way home. And so our idea was we were leaving Thursday for Rochester. We went up to Rochester, picked it up that morning, Friday morning, and then we were headed off a couple states away to a barbecue cook-off. So we piled everything for the cook-off in the back of the truck and we headed up to Rochester. That night we stayed in a hotel and the next morning we went to pick up our brand new backwoods and we were so excited. Well the next morning when we headed off to pick up our smoker we were sort of puttering around and we didn't get out of there to pick it up until the afternoon and we showed up and we picked up the smoker and we had it in the truck and we were so excited we had that truck piled high because we had this heavy smoker we had all our equipment for the barbecue contest we looked like the beverly hillbillies headed out west right and we, Eric had stacked a lot of bins up pretty high. And when he did that, I was like, that it looks kind of not too good. But he strapped it down and we were on our way, right? So we were headed down, back down Highway 15 and there's a lot of small towns there. The landscape is sort of littered with a lot of these dancing clubs, if you will, right? So we were sort of entertained all the way down looking at these things. And in one particular area, we were sort of brushed for time. So we were, as we say, we were pushing the limits of the speed rules, right? As we we're flying down this freeway and all of a sudden we hear this, bam, right? And one of the bins flew off the truck we could see it behind us bouncing down the highway, right? And lo and behold, what was in that bin? My potato pan, among other things. My beloved potato pan just went bouncing down I-15 about 80 miles an hour, right? And I was devastated. In this, so we pulled off to the side, backed up, we went to collect all the things and assess the damage and discover that there were several things in that bin. First and foremost was a knife holder that was filled with Wusthof knives. And if you know anything about Wusthof knives, they're expensive. And when I saw that laying out there on the highway, I almost cried. But we opened that knife holder up and those knives were just shiny new as they always have been. Well, they weren't new, but they looked shiny new. So they survived totally and completely unharmed, flying off and hitting the pavement at warp speed, right? The second thing that devastated me in that was I had a very beautiful two-quart saw all clad saucepan it was fully clad it was a beautiful pan that was in there and that all clad bounced down the highway and if i've ever told you that i love all clad this is evidence that all clad is a durable piece of cookware it was scratched it had no dents no dents it had a little couple of little scratchy chunks out of it but that baby just survived the handle was intact I don't really use it, I just have it downstairs so I can look at it and cry, right? <laughs> so unfortunately on that day, my poor little potato pan almost met its end. I actually use it a few times after that. I use it at the cook-off because we were wanting to do potatoes. It lost the handle, it lost 
pretty much it was beat up and it only lasted a few more times and then the other handle came off. Um, so my poor little potato pan was at the end of its time. Um, but I did learn that all clad, yes, can survive flying off the back of the truck at warp speed and landing on the asphalt. And although scratched and a little bumped up, it did survive the trip, right? Okay. So this is my compromise. I purchased a Cafalon 13 inch deep skillet. I didn't want just a plain um, saute pan because I wanted something with higher, a little bit of higher sides. And I've had, I mean, this has been going on for about two years. I haven't been able to find a pan that I was like, wow, this is a replacement for my old faithful potato pan. But hopefully this will be it. Okay, so the first thing is where I got this. I actually got this on a really incredible sale. And if you guys know me, I'm all about the bargain, right? I got this at one of my favorite places to buy cookware and kitchen gadgets, Macy's, right? And if you know anything about Macy's, if you have a Macy's credit card, they send you coupons galore. And not only that, you get points on your credit card. Last week I got a coupon that was 20 off of 50 as well as I got a rewards certificate for $25. So when I looked I knew I was going to be searching for something on sale so I could get a really good deal. Now this um, Cathlon Contemporary Pan was normally $79.99 and it was on sale for $59.99 which worked perfectly for my 20 off of 50 coupon, right? So I applied my 20 off of 50 and it brought it down to $39 and then I applied my $25 reward certificate so I didn't pay much for this pan at all. So I'm really happy about the price that I got it at. It is one great thing about this pan and one you know, one thing I tell people, generally speaking, is don't wash your nonstick skillets in the dishwasher. These say that they're dishwasher safe. I have a couple other of these Cathlon dishwasher safe pans, and um, I put it in the dishwasher all the time. I figure this one, I got such a bargain. It may hold up like my potato pan. So, and I used to drop that baby in the dishwasher all the time. So we will see how this holds up against my cheap potato pan. Now let's unbox this baby. Okay, so let's open this thing up. And this box is huge. I'm hoping the pan's not quite this big, right? And this is their contemporary line. It's sort of their middle of the road line. Um, there's another version of this. This is the updated version. The first version was not dishwasher safe. <laughs> oh, wow. Just make sure you have a lot of space when you do this. Okay, so this is the lid. Wow, it's huge. We're gonna cook a lot of potatoes in this, right? And this is a pan. And there's a warranty. There's a little use and care guide. Has some um, information about carrying. No recipes though, I don't see any recipes. Cleaning and storage, that kind of fun stuff. If anybody's into reading their um, warranty information, I don't really read it. And here's our pan. Um, one thing I can see with this pan is it's going to be great. It's got a nice wide surface here and it has the higher sides because before when I used something that was low I would spill off the side. This is going to be great. Um, it is hard anodized which means it's aluminum and they dump it in a chemical bath that's treated with um, 
that has some electricity going through it. And what it does is it makes this hard, otherwise this would react. And it would turn your food off colors and off, um, off flavors. So you want to have something that's anodized. You don't want plain aluminum. Um, has a good size handle and a really nice lid that's huge, right? So, and it's not, it's kind of heavy, but it's not too heavy. So, that's our pan. So the very first thing that we're gonna cook in here is my potatoes O'Brien. We're gonna go ahead and put this baby in the dishwasher and then we'll be cooking up our potatoes. So go ahead and look for that um, video in the next upload. It will be my world famous potatoes O'Brien, right? And we are gonna be trying out this brand new Cathlon Contemporary Deep 13 inch skillet. If you like this video, please subscribe below and give me a like and a comment and visit my website at amylearnstocook.com. I'm also on Twitter and Pinterest at amylearnstocook.com.